going to demonstrate the easiest way to make a responsive and mobile friendly website layout. Okay, we're going to begin with a normal layout that has no media query logic. So you can see I have a 100 or 1000 pixel width container centered. And if I get down to mobile size or smaller screen, you can see no changes apply. And that would be way too big for a mobile a mobile phone screen because then they'd have to scroll this way a lot to see the whole thing and that's not good you don't want to have any horizontal scroll really for smartphone users okay so now watch how easy it is okay now watch how easy it is for me to go in here and just add a CSS media rule it's gonna change up the default styling this default styling here can be changed up inside of this rule so our media rule is targeting screen type devices with the feature of max width of 768 so all screens that are 768 pixels and less will get the changes applied let's take a look let's shrink down to 768 and you see what happens and I think I can make the padding 1% to fix that vertical scroll at that size let's see yep see the uh, I mean horizontal scroll you see the way I had the padding set before, there was a horizontal scroll bar here at the bottom. You want to make sure there's no horizontal scroll when you get down to that size. And you can see I'm changing the size of the font, the text, right here. Changing the H2 to 0 0.9 EM. Changing the P to 0 0.7 EM. That way my content fits in there and it's not the words aren't so giant on the tiny smartphone screen. So you can see that is the simplest way because you'll have your default CSS and this can also go in your external style sheet. So you can have your default CSS and then at the bottom of your style sheet you can just put a media query and then change the default styles. You can change the body styles and any kind of elements that you want to target. And you can also make some elements display none so they just don't display at all for the smartphone users. Maybe you're displaying uh, Google ads or something that are 728 pixels wide or, or wider, maybe 900 pixels wide, and that won't do on a smartphone screen. You'll have to make that display none or change to responsive ads sizes, or you can put like a 300 pixel wide ad. So any elements that you want to make appear only for smartphone users, you could put here and make them display block. And then up top, just make sure they're display none. So desktop users wouldn't see them at all. So what I'm saying is desktop users can see one container. And a smartphone user can see an altogether different container by using display none and display block. For instance, if I want this to not display, I'll put display none for smartphone users. Then P elements won't display. See? It's there for desktop. But when it gets to a small screen, the P element just goes away. So that's how you can use the display property if you want. Now, I don't want anybody to focus on the particular adjustments that I made because you would have completely different CSS for your existing website or a website that you're building. And you would have totally different changes going on for people with smaller screens. Now, if you want to target to where it's only going to happen if the device max width is 768, now if we take a look at that and we try and resize it, you'll see that no changes are seen. But it would be seen if somebody comes to your document on a smartphone, they would see the the little blue mobile version. Because width and device width are two totally different things. So I'll just leave this on max width. Now to explain that further, I'm going to lead you guys to a document at develop PHP that will explain the media rule to you in depth if if you guys if some of you want to know the nuts and bolts behind the media rule in CSS then this page really goes in depth about the syntax of it shows you some examples the media types query tokens that you can apply media features that you can put conditions in place for so this page might prove handy to some of you guys that want to really understand the nuts and bolts and I'll put the link to this page in the description of the video along with the page that houses this code example. So there's different ways you can set up media queries. And I've seen some developers, they'll have 
one media query for their normal desktop users. And then they'll have another media query for the small screen users. But it really, you can just put your default CSS for desktop users on top. And then under that, just put a media query that will change that default CSS to CSS styling that's more compatible for smaller screens. That's it. And you can have as many media queries that you like inside of your styling. Now I have some handy tips. And tip number one is consider using percentage widths instead of pixel widths. You'll have different size smartphone screens, so you don't want to have pixel width because different people on different smartphones will see things differently. So you want to have percentage widths and make sure that the container is centered using margin zero pixel auto. So you can put margin CSS property with zero pixel auto and then it'll center that container and if you have a percentage width it will take up a percentage of the screen and it will be equal for all people that view it. Tip number two is separate your links and buttons far enough apart for comfortable finger use. You want to make sure that people with fat fingers aren't hitting multiple links at the same time when they're clicking. You can give your buttons or links some padding. That will make the button a little bit bigger itself. Give the user something more to click on. And between the buttons, you can give them margin space, a little more margin space than you normally would. Because you know how a mouse pointer is just that very precise tip that clicks. But a finger is a lot different. That's why you can have links a lot closer together on a big giant screen, a desktop screen, because the user has a mouse usually. And actually, a lot of the desktop screens are turning into touch screens, so you just might want to keep this rule, this tip, as a general rule for all future development projects. And tip number three, we we'll make sure there is no horizontal scroll at all. So all of your content should fit comfortably within the tiny little screen. And make sure that the user does not have to pinch and zoom a lot to interact with your content or read it. 